Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our special presentation tonight on the new way to exercise and specifically a new way to lose weight and keep it off permanently. Two out of three people in the United States are overweight. 75% are not getting adequate exercise and 18 to 35% of people are in pain. This is a challenge because if you don't get adequate exercise, it's gonna to be tough to maintain weight. Why? You know, when you're a teenager, everything's great. You've got a high metabolism. Why? Because your natural release of growth hormone and thyroid hormone is at its highest. Look at that between the years of 10 and 20 years. But look what happens in your mid 20s. Your natural release of growth hormone is down to about a half what you had as a 15, 16 year old. You get into your 30s, you're down to less than a third. And when these things slow down, metabolism changes and ages starts to set in. Now you can't change this. You cannot control this natural decline, but you can certainly balance it out with exercise. You see, early aging and slow metabolism is inevitable if you're not elevating your growth hormone and thyroid. You're gonna see skin composition changes. The biggest one, body composition changes. You're eating the same things, but you are not maintaining the same physique. And then you see things like stiffness in joints, early onset of cardiovascular disease, adult onset diabetes, insulin resistance, big one, ladies, hypothyroidism. I'm gonna share with you tonight, every lady will end up with hypothyroidism if you're not doing vigorous exercise, bone density, brain degeneration. The thyroid, when you're not getting vigorous exercise and you're not elevating growth hormone, is going to produce low amounts of thyroid hormone. So the fact is this, scientific studies have proven it. If you don't follow the recommendations of our governments and our universities, we'll talk a little bit about that, and get vigorous exercise, you're gonna have low levels of thyroid and growth hormone. Well, the, the solution is simple. The problem is how hard it is to do it. You see, you can't just go for a walk. Nobody's ever said, hey, you know, I've been going to Planet Fitness, I get on the treadmill for 30 minutes, I listen to my playlist, and I've lost all my weight. I've built muscle and I've got a six pack. Oh, you might lose some weight, but you're gonna lose muscle with it. But you're not gonna elevate thyroid and growth hormone going for a light exercise. You've gotta feel the burn. And all of you know this, you know what would happen if you lift rates, bang the ropes, and ran sprints, you would create the lactic acid burn, which turns into a big secretion of growth hormone and then boosts your thyroid, which controls metabolism. Exercise-induced growth hormone is the most powerful therapy available for weight loss. You will skyrocket your metabolism. But here's the challenge. Typical exercise does not do it. Problem number one, we gravitate to these light exercise programs. We start to see weight changes, and then we think, well, I'll just go do a yoga class, or I'll go for a walk, or I'll get on the bike, or I'll do some water aerobics or Zumba, and very few people notice any changes. Why? Because aerobic exercise <clears throat> does not create enough fatigue, unless you're climbing. It's different, you get on a Peloton for 45 minutes, and you climb, and you come back down, and you climb, or you get on a treadmill, and you put it up at a strong angle and you feel the burn. But the problem is nobody ever tells us that this 30 to 45 minutes of light exercise does not turn on these hormones. And here's proof right here. This is actual or scientific study. Vigorous high intensity exercise promotes the release of growth hormone, the suppression of cortisol, and helps restore optimal thyroid function. Long endurance exercise, on the other hand, 30 minutes of running or biking or stair climber, even worse, an hour or two hours, does the reverse. Let me repeat this. This long endurance training we are doing has the exact reverse effect, especially in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, mid 30s. It increases cortisol while suppressing your thyroid hormones. Nobody ever told us this. Many of us are doing the worst exercise we can do. When you do vigorous, feel the burn, short bouts, you promote growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone. 
comes out of your pituitary with growth hormone, tells the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. You get into endurance training, you suppress growth hormone and you suppress thyroid stimulating hormone. And here's what most people are not aware of. The thyroid does not slow down by itself, everyone. What slows down is the triggering hormone. So as you age and go through stress and gain weight, your thyroid is just sitting there waiting for the triggering hormone, which has been slowed down naturally, and you're not elevating it with exercise. So it's just sitting there saying, hey, I need, some, I need a trigger hormone to turn me on. Thyroid stimulating hormone is produced at the greatest amount with high intensity exercise. Guess what it says right on the American Thyroid Association website? Every hypothyroid person should do vigorous exercise, not long, slow, vigorous, high intensity exercise. We're gonna talk about Janine. Janine owns a gym. She was doing endurance training one to two hours per day and had hypothyroidism. Now, how could this possibly happen? She's in great shape, but she's producing cortisol. She's doing an exercise that is stressing her body and not releasing growth hormone. And she was on thyroid medication. Here's problem number two, strength training. You see, strength training is really the answer because strength training is what produces growth hormone. But here's the challenge. Like me, at 52 years old, I could no longer do vigorous strength training. So here I am, 52 years old. I've already replaced three joints, lost my six pack 10, 15 years ago. The weight just keeps coming on. I keep losing my muscle. Every time I work out, I'm taking ibuprofen. I cannot work out hard enough. And when I do, I produce cortisol, which blocks the growth hormone. Many of you have this challenge. You can't go in the gym and slam the weights for 45 minutes anymore. You can't do strength training. Maybe you don't have the time. Maybe you just don't like the high intensity. But very few people are doing the right kind of exercise. Short, vigorous bouts of aerobic exercise, five, 10 minutes. Short, vigorous bouts of strength training, five, 10, 15 minutes. Now the breakthrough. You see, the primary fuel for your muscles is oxygen. And your goal in exercise is to reduce that oxygen. Give me an example. You walk around the track at your local high school, you're not using oxygen very fast. How long could you walk? You could walk forever, right? Forrest Gump, he just kept running and running. He has more oxygen available than he's using. But what happens if you go run the stadium stairs? You're using oxygen five to 10 times faster. What happens when you do vigorous strength training? You're using oxygen really fast. What happens when you get on the rower and you row real fast? You're using oxygen very fast and you feel the burn. You are using oxygen faster than is being supplied by your blood. But what if we could just slow down the supply? Instead of having an oxygen flowing at a 10 and you have an exercise at an intensity of an 11, what if it was only a five? That would be miraculous. You would only have to exercise at a six. So now light exercise would feel like high intensity exercise. That is where blood flow restriction training came from out of Japan. And we've pioneered here in the United States. You put the bands on your arms and legs. Ours have safety studies that are completely safe. And it slows down the blood flow. So now you're working out in half the time. And I'll show you some easy workouts. Imagine five to 10 minutes of exercise. 15 to 20 if you really want to get crazy. And you're using half the weight. So because you're reducing time and load, you're dramatically reducing how much stress is on your body. You're gonna eliminate the possibility of cortisol, which would have interfered with growth hormone. It won't hurt, you won't be sore, but you will get the burn. And ask anybody on this call, they'll feel you, oh yeah, I get the burn right now, I get the pump, I get the bands off, I get them off, I get them on, I get them off. I elevate nitric oxide growth hormone and thyroid hormone, and everybody tell you the same thing. I feel 20 years younger. Yeah, growth hormone. And my performance goes up. Here's an actual study. This is middle-aged men in their 50s doing traditional strength training 
with very little growth hormone release, 0.32 NGs per ml. That's typical men in their middle ages and ladies. Why? Because you can't train like a professional bodybuilder. They put the bands on, cut the weight in half, and had a 25 times increase in growth hormone. Now, let me put this in perspective for all the new people on the call and everybody who's using your bands. Every time you put these bands on and get a good burn, you're getting more growth hormone than most people ever experience in their entire life, and that's every day. What would happen if you start getting growth hormone five, six, seven days a week like you're an Olympic level athlete? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what would happen. You'll go back in time. You'll start burning fat. You'll start putting on muscle. You will feel completely different, and you will turn on your thyroid. You see, when the, uh, the hypothalamus and pituitary gland releases growth hormone, you get a matching release of thyroid stimulating hormone, which boosts and turns on the thyroid. And when you turn on the thyroid, you go into afterburn. This isn't a Dr. Mike term. This is a Harvard term. Afterburn represents the post-exercise caloric burn or fat burn when you do a super high intensity exercise session. So let me give you an example. You get on the treadmill for 30 minutes, you do some light weights, you get on the rower, the vibration plate, feel a little burn. You probably burn about two or 300 calories during the exercise and you get very little boost in metabolism. Why? You didn't create enough fatigue. Example number two, you put the bands on, do the same exercise, but you do it half the time. And man, do you feel the pump and burn in your muscles and you get a big release of growth hormone, here comes the thyroid stimulating hormone, turns on your thyroid, and now you burn an extra 600 to 1,000 calories in the next 24 hours. Add that up, what would happen if you burn an extra 600 to 1,000 calories in the next 24 hours? And just maintain your same diet. <laughs> You'd start losing weight. You'd start burning fat while you were building muscle. You see, this never happens. Nobody ever diets, nobody ever, ever, ever has done light intensity endurance training. All this stuff we do, and at the same time they burn fat, they build muscle. It does not happen because you're doing the wrong type of exercise. But it will happen when you do BFR. So what did Janine do? She's on the call tonight, I'll probably bring her on. She reduced her training from an hour to two hours down to about 20 minutes. Oh, it was hard, right? She was, she was hooked on that long training. She started putting on muscle. Fat started coming off. And she's not an overweight girl, right? But she started leaning up, toning up, went back to her doctor. And he said, why is your thyroid producing natural thyroid hormone? What are you doing? She was doing a new way to exercise, which stimulates growth hormone and thyroid hormone and minimizes or eliminates the chances of cortisol from over training and boy did she change and i'll probably have her come on and give me a couple other examples ronnie and kathy they've been exercising and walking and dieting their whole life they'll go on a diet lose 20 pounds come off the diet put on 30. they've yo-yo diet for 20 years put the bands on go for a walk felt the burn in their legs just walking the dog lost 40 pounds together in six weeks put on muscle at the same time energy skyrocket, turned walking and dissimulating running sprints. Stan, 100 pounds overweight. He's not going to the gym. He's not a weightlifter. Stan was given a program to work out in his basement, <clears throat> barely even sweats, <clears throat> no pain, but he creates the burn. What happened? Well, he turned on growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, and then after burn, and he lost over 100 pounds. Now he's playing pickleball, energy skyrocketed, never sore, never injured a joint, less than 20 minutes. Why? Because he has the technology of BFR to biohack into efficient fatigue in his muscles. Here's Lisa, plays pickleball, eight, 10, 12 hours per week, can't lose any weight, right? She's playing pickleball. No, no offense pickleball players, that's not high intensity exercise. You don't feel the burn for three or four minutes playing pickleball unless you're a pro and each point is like 20, 30 hits back and forth. She put the bands on and all she did was go play pickleball. Put the bands on for the first 15 minutes, moving around the court, feeling the pump and the burn, lost 17 pounds. Playing pickleball at a whole new level, energy skyrocket. 
So you can continue doing what you love to do, golf, pickleball, rower, vibration, play, go for a walk, clean the house, mow the yard, just put the bands on, get a little burn, turn on your growth hormone. How easy is it? Well, can you do a three minute arms workout? Our three minute guns, we have people of all ages doing. That's all you'd have to do to get this started. First workout, three minute arms. Oh, you can do more. We'll give you some shoulder stuff to do, maybe a plank. This is all you gotta do to get the burn. Turn on growth hormone. Next day, four minute buns. No weights, no equipment, just put the bands on. We'll give you a few moves to do and you are going to feel a pump and burn in your legs. Just ask Mary Wellman the first time she did it. And that's what I do now. I don't lift any weights with my legs, no weights. I don't get in on equipment. I don't do squats. I either do the stairs or I do the four minute leg workout. You gotta see my legs, muscular, toned, and no weight, no machines, nothing. Why? Because I can go get the burn just like I'm lifting heavy weights by having the bands on. Disclaimers, hey, just make sure you check with your physician before you start an exercise program. We're gonna send you a five by seven uh, instructions and safety card. It'll be right in the email after you join and it'll be right in your bands. There's only a few contraindications, very few people have them. If you wanna know more about these, wanna check on these, hey, email us at support at b3sciences.com. I want to thank you for attending this exciting weight loss presentation, the new way to exercise for permanent weight loss. I'm going to pause the recording.